we're going to talk about short story. The first thing that we're going to talk about is character and characterization. The main character in a story, the person the story is about, or the person that you're rooting for in a story, is called the protagonist. The person that opposes that main character comes against them in one way, shape, or form is the antagonist. There are various types of characters as well. When you're at home, you can click on this various types green type for a YouTube video that explains a few other types of characters as well. But for now, we're going to focus on the foil, who is a minor character, a sidekick, so to speak, like Robin is to Batman, who brings out specific characteristics in another character by contrast. Robin is a great guy, too, in Batman and Robin series, but because he's a little bit smaller and a little bit less savvy, he brings out the masculinity and the heroism of Batman. That's what the foil does. Another thing that's important in character is understanding the narrator, separating the narrator from the character if need be, seeing that perspective from a narrator versus another character. There is a term called dynamic. The dynamic character changes, grows, or learns a lesson in the story. In opposition to that is the static character who stays the same. They're there for a necessary purpose. They're not necessarily the character who is the protagonist or the dynamic character who's growing and learning a lesson, who's teaching the theme. Then there's the flat character who is a one-dimensional character with few personality traits. They serve just possibly one purpose. They're there because they're necessary, but that's it. And then there's a round character who is a complex character who often adds a lot, can also be the protagonist, adds a lot to the story. In direct or direct characterization is an important thing to know. When an author writes and describes characters, they'll use these two things. Direct characterization occurs when descriptions are written directly. Sam was this or that. He was brave and confident, so now you know that Sam was brave and confident. However, an indirect characterization is the things that the character does that exposes their nature, that exposes what they are like. It's not explicitly told, but because they do an act of heroism or say something that makes sense, you understand that that's a characteristic of the character. That is indirect. Next, we'll move to setting. Setting uses imagery and word choice to indicate what the setting is, obviously. Authors will describe where things happen using a lot of adjectives, and they'll describe when things happened because it sets the setting. It's setting you in that place. Ask yourself these four questions. The next step is the plot. The plot is the sequence of events in a story. It is ongoing. I like to think of it as a big cast iron pot of soup. And as you add more ingredients, the soup thickens, the soup gets better, it gets tastier, juicier, more flavorful. But all these things are added, which improve it and, and bring it along to the final product. The plot goes from the beginning of the story to the end of the story, making the story what it is. And of course, the plot wouldn't happen without conflict. Conflict is a struggle between opposing forces. It doesn't have to be a person, but it can be. And it is also considered to be an internal conflict or an external conflict. Internal conflict happens silently within a person or a character. External conflict is outwardly expressed, whether in an actual bodily fight or in words that can be harsh, creating conflict. There's also five different areas that conflict can be seen. There's a person versus themselves, which is often an internal conflict. You're making decisions. There's um, person versus person or character, as it's also called, because sometimes the conflict occurs with like the, if the characters are animals and not people. Person versus nature. When nature, like a lightning bolt, hits your house or something like that, and you're dealing with that conflict. 
person versus society, or something is happening in the society that's causing a conflict within the character, and person versus fate. Things happen because that's just the way life is. What are you going to do with that? That is person versus fate. And then we're going to talk about theme and moral. They both have similar um, definitions, but they're different. A theme is a message to the reader from a story. There's a main theme in a story, and there's often sub-themes, lessons that are um, portrayed through the characters, the things that happen. Then there's a moral. A moral is attached to a fable or a tale, or a theme is attached to an essay or a story. Discuss. What stories do you know? What is the story's main message? Can there be smaller themes within a story? Think about various lessons the characters learn in a story. These are the many themes, but there's always a greater message once a story is completed. This is the story's main theme. We'll talk briefly about point of view, which is a perspective that a story is told. Now you can consider this as a visual, a person standing on the tip of a very tall mountain. Their point of view is different than a person standing on the ground. Such is true in essays and stories that you read. As you can see here, there's the singular version and the plural version of the point of view, which means there's just more than one person. First person talks about I, me, my, and mine. It's first person. It's it's the, it is you, it is I had a cat, my car ran off the road. Second person always uses you, your, or yours. It is frowned down upon in academia and is not very often used. It's most common when you're reading instructions. Then there's third person, which has two offshoots of it. There's third person limited and third person omniscient. In third person limited, the narrator of the story knows everything about a character. It's not them, it's not first person, but it's a different character. Let's say it was Ivan, you know everything about Ivan. Now if it's omniscient, the narrator knows everything about every character and they can explain the thoughts and uh, um, the steps of every character. Omniscient meaning knowing all. Now there's tone and mood, not to be confused with theme and moral, which start with the same letter. The tone is a writer's attitude towards the characters. So a story will take on a tone because of the way the writer wrote it. And a mood is what's given to you, the reader, the emotion caused by the way the writer wrote. What elements of the story are used to create mood? What tone is created through characters' words or narrators' words? And how do you know? What are the indicators of tone? Take a moment to look at a paragraph or two or a story. We'll look, look at these four terms as well. Symbol. A symbol contains several layers of meaning, often concealed at first, and which can represent several others. Uh, for example, the sun can be a symbol of happiness or brightness. An arrow can be a sign of like being a straight shooter. Those types of things are symbols and symbolism is often used to represent the meaning. If you think about different cultures, there are many symbols that stand for in America, the flag stands for freedom. That is a symbol. The next term is idiom, which is an expression that is unique to a language where its intended meaning is different from its literal meaning. It's raining cats and dogs is an idiom. It's not really raining cats and dogs, but in this part of the country, we realize that that means it's raining really, really hard. The next term is foreshadowing. This happens often in stories, a lot in mystery stories. It's where there's hints provided that tell you that something is going to happen. Like if the camera in a movie might even pan in on, on a doorway and then you know in the future that doorway is going to be important. Then there's inciting incident. The first story scene that sets the protagonist to pursue the mission. So something happens and because of that, 
the protagonist has a mission for the rest of the story. That's the inciting, often exciting, incident. So the question I have for you then is why do authors use contrast and comparison in stories? And what effect do contrast and comparisons have on readers? So now I want you to start thinking about contrast in characters and places and comparisons. How are things alike or different? Here you can see a Venn diagram. You'll be given stories in this class where you have to compare perhaps a, a movie to the, to the story. And on this side, if this was the movie, you would write the characteristics that are only in the movie. And on this side, you would write characteristics that are only in the book. And in the center red part, you would write where they overlap. Things, characteristics that overlap. Here's a second chance for you to do that with maybe characters. You could contrast one character and another character's name here. Things that are only a characterization of that person, that person, and then what things do they have in common. Lastly, I wanted to make available to you the plot mountain diagram. Here you can see the different stages, and we'll talk about that in class, of the plot mountain diagram. And then here is an open diagram, which can be used as a help guide. Thank you.